Hello, I am joined by Spitfire, Wayne, Light, and Crescent. And this is the TRR interview. So these four gentlemen are going to be answering questions on behalf of the TRR. Hello, gentlemen. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hello. Uh, so one by one, I guess uh, you guys can introduce yourselves. So we'll start with Spitfire. Hi, I'm Spitfire. Uh, I'm just a lonely bombardier. Yeah. Hey, I'm Wayne. I'm uh, the second lieutenant in the infantry company, so I help run the day-to-day -day tasks of it. Hey, I'm Corporal Light, also in the infantry company, under uh, Sergeant Scar Talent. I'm Crescent. I'm Sergeant Major of the infantry, and it's great to be here. Awesome. So uh, can you please explain the name of the regiment and how that sort of came to be? So... The TRR stands for the Royal Rangers, uh, and Arna created it when he started the regiment about this, during the summer of 2018 after leaving the KRA. It wasn't really anything special, from what I hear, it just came to him, like uh, you know, in his like most wettest of dreams. That, that's about it. Okay. Um, so can you speak about the early days of the regiment and how everything uh, sort of mustered together? Uh, it started off pretty slow at, for the first few days. You know, he was just getting the server ready. He, uh, it didn't all exactly start out great with uh, how he left along with other reg regiment representatives, but that was essentially resolved over false claims. <laughs> but... Uh, eventually picked up and the TR uh, grew extremely fast. Like I know when I first saw them two weeks after forming, they were bringing 20 to 25 to public events during a time when most regiments were failing. And like I, I know people commented like uh, that have been in the community for years and said that uh, it reminded them of like days of early NW with the growth. But after that, I kind of reached a plateau and just went on until, you know, now when we're bringing 30 to 50 to events across uh, five different companies with you know, a thousand plus people that have come through the regiment over the uh, an 18 month pro process. Cool. So uh, when did you join the regiment and like, what was the state of the regiment uh, then? Uh, I joined about a month, month and a half after I worked for a few events and I just transferred in from the FGD. And I got placed as an enlisted, but I joined the recently formed Audi company, and they pretty much needed a, a leader since Fanta, the one and only senpai, went back to infantry. So I just got moved up to lieutenant after a week, and uh, I, I, I stayed the head of the company for about a year and a few months until I left the regiment for, uh, back in December. Cool. Uh, so... What is the regiment about? Uh, how would you summarize it? Uh, I guess, I mean, like, do you want, like, structure or? Uh, yeah, like, if someone were to ask you, hey, like, uh, why should I join the TRR? Like, what, what sort of regiment is it? Like, what would you tell them? I think the base thing, what most people get told is that you can reach all aspects of the game. With, you know, you have, you can attend EU events, NA events. If you want to do public or private, you have the option. Uh, and although we attend so many events, we were able to fit in time for competitive events. Like since joining, I know we've competed in at least uh, five different tournaments on both the EU and inside, as well as uh, a bit in the Aussie community, which is always a refresher. So I guess it's just, there's a lot of you. You open to a lot of different opportunities if you want to join. If you want to, you know, you can go infantry, you can go rifles, you can go ox, arty, or cavalry. Whatever you want to do, you can. I don't know if anyone else wants to indulge in on that. Um, yeah, I'll ask Wayne. Uh, Wayne, what do you think makes a TRR stand out? 
I mean, coming from the KRA, it was just so big, but like, I mean, the TR has grown a lot since I came, but really stands out is the opportunity to really reach anything in the TR, just because of how the communities ran, and all the, like, I guess you could say, kind officers and officers that actually, like, care about what you're doing and how you're doing in the regiment. There's always opportunity to improve in the regiment, and uh, we're just a general chill community compared to a lot of other regiments, which are a little bit too competitive. But, and, like, can't keep that constant casual attitude. Cool. Uh, Light, did you have anything to add? Uh, just wanted to say that uh, since joining in Thanksgiving of this year, um, I've, had, I've had a lot of opportunities to experience everything these gentlemen have been talking about and uh, have just generally enjoyed the atmosphere of what makes the TRR, the TRR being open and basically available for anyone to participate and play. Cool. Uh, Crescent, did you want to add anything? I mean, people here, they're fucking amazing, right? I don't, oops, I swore. I don't know if I was supposed not to. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. That's okay? Okay, my bad, bro. But yeah, the people here are so amazing, like, from my old regiment, like, everyone here is so, I don't know how to describe it, but like, you can get along with literally anyone here and no one really cares about you know what games you play what things you do in your real life you, everyone just gets along here and i fucking love that so much cool so i want to talk about uh well i want to know like what the regiment kind of means to you guys on like uh a, on a personal level so uh, spitfire can you uh start that off uh I guess it's always been my main community uh, for online gaming since I've joined. It's a place to go to pretty much just have fun with uh, your friends uh, with a variety of games. You know, it doesn't just have to be hold fast. It just doesn't have to be scheduled. It can be whenever. And it's uh, very grateful for that opportunity. Cool. Uh, yeah, we can just go down the chain. Nice. Uh, for me? It's a pretty fun opportunity to do. You get to experience a lot of different games with a lot of different people. Um, you get a lot of different opportunities to uh, do different uh, companies, leadership-wise, and all that. And also on a personal level, I think it's just like, it's another kind of thing to do in life. It's something else to experience and meet different people from around the world. It has definitely been enjoyable playing games with all of these gentlemen, from Holdfast to Hearts of Iron to... Any new and upcoming game that's come out, everyone's always playing, everyone's always on, and you can, you can definitely come to people with anything, and th th this community is just great. And, like, I like this regiment's given me so many opportunities to prove myself. Like, the amount of times I didn't need to step up, like, they were just offering me, hey, Crescent. You want to try doing this? Hey, Chris, you want to try doing that? And, you know, I proved myself. And, you know, I, they give to me and I give back. And that's the type of community that we are. And that's the kind of community we strive to be. Awesome. Uh, so say, like, a recruit joins a regiment. Uh, what are some of the things they can expect, like, their first week? So, uh the second someone joins the Discord, it turns out it pinged all the recruitment officers and they can expect it to be immediately welcomed uh, and directed to our recruitment office, which from there they'll be welcomed into the regiment uh, with like a short little guide where they can go over all the Discord and schedule. Uh, they'll pretty much, they'll start attending events for the week uh, with the infantry company uh, just to learn the basics of the game. And after that, they'll set They'll then be promoted at the Sunday ceremony as long as they make four events. Uh, and from there, they can just keep moving up the chain and chain. And, you know, once they hit PFC, they then have the option to go to any of the specialized companies, which uh, I guess is for some people, isn't for others. But that's pretty much just how the hierarchy goes for the basic basics of Enlisted. Anyone else have anything to add? And they'll uh, also yeah. get a nice welcome training from me, Corporal Light. Yeah. So basically, once people join in and they go through that entire recruitment process, 
Uh, we have a training 30 minutes uh, before every battle, and then that gives them a time to uh, do basic formation training with someone like Mr. Light, a few of our other corporals and sergeants, and that way they have uh, like the knowledge to go into the lion battle, not break any rules, and uh, basically know what they're doing. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so how would you describe the culture within your Discord? Like, how does it differentiate or like how is it similar compared to like some other cultures around the community uh i mean it's very diverse from uh, where people come but it's i think it's special in its own way not very similar to other discords you know we we have our rule set but uh we screw around a lot while trying to but we keep it serious in events but we just we just have fun outside of events and I guess that's what the whole concept of, of like a regiment is to have fun with friends uh, in and out of the game. Oh, anyone else want to take that? I mean, I, I also mean... want to say, hold. Okay, I can go. Like, if, like, we're a pretty chill regiment. Like, we're pretty fun to play with, but I love that if someone attacks one of our guys. Or like by attack, I mean be toxic to one of our guys. I love how everyone else has his back, or hers, but you know, I don't think we have a female, so his back. And we always we're like we always cover each other's back, and that's. I feel like we I didn't see that in other discords from what I've seen, or other groups at all. To follow up with Crescent's statements, we're basically like one big family here in the regiment. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, has the regiment uh, majorly changed at all since uh, when you guys first joined, and if so, how? Uh, it's changed a lot. Like, I know, I think what I wrote last time I did this on the Rin interview is we've gone through a thousand members. The Discord has become a hundred times larger. We've gone through breakups and coups, through uh, explosive growth, especially around Christmas time. Uh, we now have five companies from the original three. Uh, technically four if you count Honor Guard, but, but that that was a short stint. We've but throughout all of that we still have the same leader, Colonel Honor, our our daddy senpai. Uh, Wayne, has the regiment changed at all since when you first joined? Um, actually, quite a lot. The regiment went through a little bit of a stint uh, before I joined, because Honor went over to basic training and joined the army. So we were kind of like there was kind of the situation where without a, like the main leader for a bit, it kind of went downhill from what I've heard. But uh, Furku, who was the major then, is now our regimental sergeant major, really held uh, the infantry together. So when I came in, that gave me the opportunity to really push forward. Now we're like from infantry bringing five members. Now we're up to bringing twenty members per event usually. Anyone else want to add anything? Uh, this has definitely changed a lot, a lot, a lot since I joined back in just Thanksgiving. I uh, basically experienced the rebirth of the infantry company, going from no line leaders, no no one basically higher than like i don't know kingsman and then a major and just watched as we grew to having two sections hopefully soon to be three and just this plethora of people that have stepped up and are now all of our ranks are filled with wonderful amazing people cool uh let's see here uh, so let's talk about leadership a bit. Um, what are you guys looking for uh, when looking for like a NCO candidate? Because that's a pretty big responsibility, right? Like there's a big difference between like a say and enlisted private and then an NCO where you're actually like in charge of people. So what are some of like the characteristics and some of the things you guys are looking for? Uh... I'm Wayne's the officer, so yeah, I guess he should take this one. So whenever I look for infantry candidates, basically how it works in the infantry is whenever we promote someone, we do it based kind of a democratic, like a democratic way. 
where all the NCO and officer corps gets a vote on who gets promoted uh, each week. And it's, of course, the major has the executive, like, order. He can, like, deny it or accept it. But basically what we personally look for is someone to be active. So they got to be pretty act not, like, hugely active, but active enough to be able to commit some time to the regiment. They have to be generally a decent person-wise. Like, they can't be uh, toxic to any people. Like, they can't be generally toxic towards other uh, companies as well. Uh, they have to have some leadership qualities. Uh, and a general NCO, they have to have a mic. Just so they have that ability to lead and uh, help command. Cool. Anyone else have any thoughts on it? Nope. <laughs> Guess we'll move on. Um, so, has the regiment uh, faced any major adversities? And if so, have you guys overcome them? Ooh, my favorite. <laughs> As I just said, a lot. There were some, like, I, I suppose two of the uh, the big ones, but that wasn't the big one, would be uh, when we first formed, we were getting blacklisted from events over accused veg sniping, which... Uh, we were since apologized uh, to, and on our leaving for th that three-month uh, period, uh, both had negative effects on the regiment, but the very big one uh, was Brexit, which was uh, from March to April of last year, and it was just a large contingent of EU staff left the regiment under extremely unfriendly terms and formed their own, uh, and we just had, I think the total was 17 people our highest ranking EU member was a sergeant after that. Uh, and we just had a very toxic relationship with them over the uh, six month period, which uh, ended with their final disbandment. I suppose that that was the biggest one. I don't know. I haven't been here in the past three months. Were there any uh, uh, problems of sorts? <laughs> um. The only major issue we've had in the past three months was the creation of a smaller regiment. It wasn't that bad and that much of an issue. It was just like how it was done. It was a bit unpleasant. It wasn't the best way to do it. How they, I'm not going to name the person, but how they left the regiment. But uh, that was probably one of our bigger issues. Uh, Light, do you have any adversities you want to speak on? Uh, there's been just a couple of uh, toxic people that have come in but have been quickly removed. Nothing too major. Do you want to add anything, Crescent? I mean, I've been here for a few months and for the few months I've been here, nothing bad has ever happened and I hope it stays that way. But yeah. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Cool. Um, so... For anyone listening, do you guys want to, like, clarify anything? Like, maybe they have some misconceptions about the TRR. Is there anything you just want to clarify and just get out there? I don't know if this is still the case as before, but uh, <laughs> for a long period of time last year, we were almost imposed with squeakers because uh, we had a lot of children in our command staff, and uh, we got some hate for that. But my biggest thing is it's a game, like... If you're not okay with having an under 18 be in charge of you, then I don't know why. I, don't, I guess I don't understand why you're taking the time to complain. I'm 16 and I really just don't give a shit. And I, sp I think that's shared amongst most people. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing we want people to know is we're just a very chill, casual regiment. You may mess around a lot. You may see us screaming from time to time, doing a lot of stupid things during line battles and all that. But we all have fun. Everyone in the regiment enjoys each other's time, commitment. Um, have that, just really that casual vibe. And as Spitfire was saying with under 18, like, a lot of our high command and our officer corps is under 18. We have a few, of course, older guys that are, like, around 40, 25, that-ish. But, uh, and we all work pretty well together. No real issues over it. You occasionally see, uh, Honor ordering us to TK 40 of our teammates because one of them killed a new recruit. Oh my. Sometimes we have Honor telling us to TK him for killing a new recruit. Yep. Cool. Uh, so, 
uh, when it comes to quality versus quantity, like would you guys rather have one very skilled individual or would you rather have or trade that for five average members? Like what what do you guys feel is more important? Um, I'll answer this one just because I've been around more recently. Um, personally, the regiment would rather have, it depends, of course, if it's just general skill, if it's five uh, general, like, not skilled people, but they're still fun to play with, they're still nice guys, we would rather have them. But if it's just one skilled guy that's really nice, really uh, chill, then we would take him as well. Like, either way, we really couldn't care as long as uh, they're just generally chill people, because we care more for uh, attitude than we do really about general skill. I mean, I'm just going to build off of that. Even if they have, like, they have a good attitude, and if they don't have the best skills, with that attitude, like, their attitude will prevail. And those attitudes, you know, those are going to give them determination to be better at what they do. Like, I haven't been here a while, but for my time of being here, I've seen some very, like, not good, like, unskillful players become skillful players. And I believe that's because of the attitude they always had. Anyone want to jump in? Okay, I guess we'll move on. Um, so let's talk about the code of conduct a little bit. Uh, does the regiment have any zero tolerance policies? And if so, uh, what would they fall under? Uh... The biggest ones, uh, which we've had problems with, are uh, NSFW in public channels, along with racism and hatred towards members. Those are zero policy and will get you banned immediately. Some of our other rules also include, like, just following Discord TOS, which includes being above the age of 13, uh, not being an asshole, uh, and just, I guess, having fun as a regiment. I don't know. Anyone else want to hit that one up? Um, yeah. General guidelines is just like no homophobia, no racism. General stuff that we just don't permit just because it's we're trying to be accepting community for all and we just can't tolerate people like that in our community. Uh, but besides that, we fairly give out uh, warnings. We don't automatically kick people. We try to give everyone a chance even if they're kind of toxic just to improve. Those are only real zero tolerance policies. Cool. Um, so say someone was making fun of a squeaker uh, within your regiment. Now, is that something you would look into or is that something you would just kind of brush to the side? It depends if it's casual banter, like they're both okay with it, a funny little thing. But if it's if it's some just someone being hateful towards one, like a squeaker, Mem other member with some other issue, we don't really tolerate that. We'll talk to them, we'll give them a warning, but um, besides that, we can't, like, we'll ban them, of course, if they keep it up, but uh, we don't really accept people like that. Usually they get not really kicked out, but they just leave on their own eventually, because we're just not accepting and they'll eventually get bored of the community. They can't really get their hatred out. We don't really allow it. Have you guys had any situations like that? Um, we had one person recently, he wasn't hateful towards a squeaker, but he was hateful to uh, Europeans for no real reason. And he was also just generally a toxic person, and we got him out pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, so, running a regiment is uh, very taxing, like, I don't need to tell you guys that. So, like, uh, how, do you, how do you keep yourself from getting burnt out? By only doing one event a week, and... Grindy Banner Lord. <laughs> um, personally, how I do it is we delegate a lot. Um, we have so many officers and so many NCOs to help share our tasks with. That way we don't get burnt out. Uh, just putting limits on yourself and just making sure everyone takes uh, the part that they want to take in the regiment. That's why we can go through with so many different people and have give so many opportunities is that way no one gets burnt out. If they ever get too burnt out, they can always switch to a uh, honorary role. And then if they ever want to come back, they can come back again and uh, share that responsibility. Uh, Light, how do you avoid burnout? 
I play a whole ton of different games outside of Holdfast. I also have hobbies outside of the computer, which include like Warhammer and Magic the Gathering. And I'm also a graduate student, so I have to dedicate time to that as well. Cool. Preston, did you want to add anything? I mean, I, I released my burnout by roasting Wayne. And he roasts me back. And that's how I do it. Like, we literally throw our stress at each other. And it's fun. Pretty good strategy. Not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> Wayne man bad. Canadian man bad. Cool, so yeah, let's talk about the command system. Um... Yeah, so like, speak a bit about how it's structured and sort of uh, what it was inspired by. Uh, so it's funny. Uh, you have Honor, he's Colonel. Ben and Marky are both the Lieutenant Colonels, and both have come up from recruit to uh, Lieutenant Colonel throughout all the ranks. After that, that's I uh, hate HQ. That's like the uh, the top brass, and after that, you go into the um. The high command, which or range command, which is the majors or the heads of each company, uh, and they pretty much just go down to their subordinates. From uh, I know for Artie, which I've only it's the only company I've experienced with. It's he's just been the major's been the head, and then a lieutenant, the captain's just been the two IC, and then you have the NCOs below, which can lead uh, the Artie sections of gun teams in and out of events, also as well in trainings. Um, regarding the infantry, which is the only really company that's different in uh, organization, how we work is we have our major as our head. Right now we don't have a current captain, but uh, right now we also have two lieutenants. So there's Gubsy, which is the first lieutenant, and I'm the other lieutenant. And then we have our sergeant major, who overlooks the trainings, he overlooks the general two sections we have, because we're the only company with sections. And how our sections work is we have two sections right now, each are commanded by a sergeant, and the sergeant usually the goal is to have two corporals with each section and they basically the goal is to train the section to make sure everything's like general welfare of the section and uh they also fight in the line battles together so we split people by the section into the different line battle channels so they play with their uh fellow linemen in their section cool so uh how efficient is this system and do you guys think think it could use some improvements um, right now the infantry system works pretty well. Everyone gets to share in the responsibility that way, and everyone also can be better trained that way and have more of a voice. I think it can't be done very much, like, much better at all, really, for infantry. I don't know about all the other companies, but I think overall our organization is running pretty well right now. And, uh, we're not really having any logistic issues. Cool, so let's, uh, let's talk about age requirements. Um, does the regiment have like a set in stone policy or is it kind of flexible? Uh, I mean, we go by Discord TOS, which is just 13 plus, but that is like age is fairly flexible since we did grandfather people in kind of in that system that we're under. As for how it's currently been like being taken care of, I'm not sure, but I never over like a six month process. I don't even ever remember having someone under 13 come in. Um, regarding, as Spitfire said with the Discord, we follow the Discord TOS. So if you're under 13, uh, we have to kick you out. If you come in again and you're under a different name, we can't really figure out, because especially a lot of those newer guys don't speak. But uh, basically, be above 13. Uh, we have no actual, besides that, like any rules. Uh, like for age-wise, we base it solely off maturity. So, like, for example, if there's someone that's, like, 15, but they're pretty mature, we're fine with them. But whereas there's compared to an 18-year-old that's not mature, doesn't, like, age doesn't really matter for us too much. It's all about pure maturity. Cool. So, uh, say you did have a member that was 13, which is the minimum age required. Um, and you had them, like, in a voice channel with a bunch of, like, 20 and 30-year-olds, and maybe they were talking about stuff that maybe a 13-year-old year old shouldn't be hearing. Um, how would you handle that situation, and has that sort of situation ever come up? Um, handle the situation? If that ever comes to be, people really don't talk about any issues like that. And if they do talk about that, they tend to go in their own private channels, do that, or officer channels. 
Um, if that does become a situation, though, and does become an issue, we'll handle it according to our rule set, and we'll, uh, the first chance is we give, like, a few warnings first. It shouldn't be that issue, and people usually do learn, but if it became a constant issue, then we would take disciplinary action. May even involve a kick or a ban later. Okay, so it is something that you would um, pay attention to. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's talk about professionalism and discipline. So what would you guys rate yourself from like 1 to 10 uh, during events? During events itself, we rate pretty, I would say about an 8 on the scale. Because during events, we make sure people listen. Of course, we do have some people messing around. And of course, we do have fun, because that's the main goal in the end of the day, is to have fun. But uh, if it's people just being toxic or not listening, uh, it will result in a disciplinary action, like we'll talk to them after the event or something like that. If it, but if it constantly becomes an issue, we we'll, may have to kick them, or even if it becomes a bigger issue, ban them completely. That's, uh, I think that pretty much supports what most people think. It's, well, you'd have fun, but if you can't follow the rules that of the event regiment, then you just you don't I guess have have your place. You, you need to have fun within the set parameters. Like even before we take such drastic actions as a kick or a ban, we do have like these probationary periods where we keep you muted for a certain amount of time. And that's like the only case if you keep like if you keep avoiding what we ask you to do. But other than that, I don't think we've ever had any discipline problems. So are you guys uh, content where where you are with professionalism and discipline, or uh, are you looking to change things? I, I mean, think we... I'm... Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Light. In my opinion, there's always room to improve. We can always continually work on discipline um, and just find find different areas to work on. I mean, it's it's always a process. It's always going to be changing. There's always new people coming in, and it's just something you got to work on. And every regiment has to work on that. Uh, regarding our current state, I think we're doing pretty well. I think we have a good balance between professional attitude during line battles and messing around and having fun at the same time. Of course, there's a, again, as Light was saying, with new people, we have to change that, we have to make sure they understand that. But otherwise, we're a pretty disciplined regiment. When it actually comes to line battle, we're fully like. All professional we're all in it we're all serious before like before that trainings and all that we do have some fun and we do mess around cool so um in terms of recruitment um how has it been going for you guys uh what are some of the strategies you utilize and how effective have they been I'm regarding of... oh you go uh yeah regarding recruitment recently We've had a pretty good boom because of the new updates and the new additions to Holdfast. Um, but usually just how we get at recruits is we have a few recruiters. They can, since like, basically how it works in our regiment for recruiters is you apply to be a recruiter. And that way you're not getting people that are just NCOs and they don't want to do it and kind of forced to do it because they want to keep their rank. They want to stay where they are. So that makes sure that the people that actually are recruiting are interested in recruiting. That way we get more uh, interested people that are actually like interested in how the regiment works, interested in the game into our regiment, and that gives the option for the recruiters actually to be interested in what they're doing, and not just be forced to do it. So we kind of get of a boom that way, and we also attend uh, some public line battles right now to get our recruits as well. Exactly how I was going to put it, yeah. Cool. So speaking of recruitment, uh, there are some darker methods of recruitment that some regiments uh, unfortunately utilize. Um, so how would you guys feel if, say, some some random red regiment starts messaging your members and is like, hey, like you're only a private in a TRR. Why don't you come here? You'll be a guard. You'll be a fusilier. You'll be, you know, you'll be a shiny new rank. Uh, how would that make you guys feel? We've We've dealt with it before. And I think K-Bills had a wonderful way of putting it, where it's it's on us if the person wants to leave, 
you know, if it's a higher person that understands and they want to leave, then I think it's our job to make our community better, to want them to stay. But we've had the problem with, you know, people messaging new recruits. Like uh, there was one instance probably a year ago where a captain of another large regiment messaged a brand new private uh, kind of trash talking us and uh, saying our system was uh, flawed and gave him the link. And I was actually in their Discord at the time that he joined. And I welcomed him and, and he said he was, and it was, and I pretty much hopped in the channel with the two of them uh, while at mid, mid talk and explained to him what, what it was. And he was just generally confused. And if you're going to do, it's just extremely uh, disgusting and annoying if you're going to do that to someone who doesn't know better because they're so new and it's definitely looked down upon and can get you removed. Uh, from like d discords uh if you're gonna keep doing that to our members that's a pretty low blow um regarding people that do that is so basically how it works is if it's fine if like they're friends and of course they're talking that's that own person's decision and they know what they're doing but regarding newer people it's just out of the blue we don't really tolerate that at all we'll message their regimental leader and uh see how they want to handle it if it's the regimental leader themselves doing it and it's a smaller regiment which tends to be it when that kind of idea happens. We'll talk to the regimental leader, explain how that's not really tolerated. Um, if it goes too far, we have a lot of connections with other regiments that we play together and played uh, a lot, like their different line battles and served on their different servers, like as assistant admins and all that. And we have a general idea of the community to try to keep that away and avoid that. So usually we get them blacklisted from other events, so on and so forth. They keep causing issues and they don't want to keep a general community mindset and try to find, uh, follow the general community rules. Yeah, so like would blacklisting be the policy then? Like if they're continuing and showing no signs of stopping, would you try to get other regiments to sort of bar them from events? Yeah, so what we do is uh, we'll message other reg regimental leaders, tell them what's been going on. Usually most of the time they'll agree with us, they'll understand the situation, they'll help us. Uh, that usually puts a stop to it real fast, because you, if there's just no events to attend, you can't really be a regiment, per se. Um, but we try to we try to be kind when we do that. We try to explain it to the regimental leader first. We had a recent issue, not with reg sniping, but with harassment with another regimental leader. Um, we talked to them a bit, and we explained to them what's happened. Uh, hopefully they understand it, and they can improve upon it. They're a new regiment, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Uh, but yeah, we just you know, try to keep a general policy have a like working with other regiments well that way we can help those situations out cool so you guys have unfortunately had to deal with uh, a regiment split or two um three <laughs> or three yes um are they always a negative thing or do you guys think that regiment splits can be done cleanly they definitely can uh you know, as I explained, the first one wasn't so cleanly and didn't really help anyone. But the second one, uh, it was it involved uh, the Aussie members uh, forming their own regiment, and it was it was done cleanly. You know, left on great terms, and uh, we've since remained good friends. And you know, we, at times we've traded members with them. You know, and the the doors are always open, and it, it's definitely boosted the Aussie community since they've gone in and made a name for themselves with uh, their size at oceanic events so it can definitely be done uh, in a good proper way uh, with all parties benefiting anyone else want to share any thoughts or opinions just to reaffirm spitfire yeah the general idea is if you leave on good terms it's fine but the only issues we have is if you try to snake around it, for example, like had a member of ours go under different tags to create his own regiment while he was still in our current regiment and go recruiting uh, while he was still in our Discord, still had all of his officer perms and NCO perms and all that. And that caused an issue because it wasn't done properly. That's the kind of situations we'd like to avoid, and it did cause an issue, which we've resolved now. But uh, if it's a situation where just people just want to try something new or form their own regiment, we find that fine. 
Um, as long as they tell us beforehand, everything's done respectfully, we can remove all your perms, make sure there's no damage done, and uh, leave on general good terms. Okay, so it would be possible for a group of people within your regiment to leave and uh, relations like wouldn't be soured um, as long as they do things the correct way then. Yeah. But I guess that hasn't really happened, has it? One of three. Yeah, one of three. <laughs> you, you generally don't see that with many regiments. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Like, do you think it's like immaturity? Do you think it's people just making like impulsive decisions and not really thinking things through? I would definitely say the impulsive decisions, because it seems that when it's, I guess from, I guess what I've like seen, uh, it generally, if it's going to go negatively, it's mainly just from people having disagreements with the current members and making a decision overnight, and <laughs> by the next day. When you start thinking it through, you can't really go back on it, and it's just not taking the time to look through it. And like, instead of trying to work things out with your regiment, people, some people just rather break off and try and do their own thing. Okay, um, so let's talk about the opposite side of that coin. Let's talk about mergers. Um, so regiment mergers do happen often, more often than I thought they did. Um, okay. So say like a big regiment just comes over to like a small regiment and sort of asks them or coerces them or whatever. So they like join join their empire, so to speak. Like, how do you guys feel about that? Like, do you think a merger should only take place like between two regiments of equal size because there, there might you know be a power imbalance with like one huge empire just swallowing a smaller regiment like how do you guys feel about that we've taken in uh we've merged with i believe i think two different groups both were smaller groups uh that one of which came to us and it was mainly because their leaders uh were going to pretty much be leaving and they didn't and everyone else uh, that they had in the regiment were brand new to the game and they've rather just put their members uh, I guess into us then rather than pretty much just have the regiment go off and die and those members leave the game and Those went smoothly. I know for one we even uh, let them form their own company with which they uh, ran them, you know, they ran themselves and they pretty much just went with it uh, It is definitely a low blow if larger regiments are going up to brand new regiments and immediately offering a merger. It's kind of just a cheap way to take away something that could be good for them in the future and not even give it a chance. Regarding mergers, um, I think it's generally fine to merge with any group if you want to and as long as both parties agree. Of course, the you can expect that the larger group will still keep their current commander and their current commander would have probably a superior rank or an equal rank to the lower uh, regimental commander in the other group. But um, generally, I think it's fine, as long as both regiments agree, both regiments know what they're doing, and uh, both are committed. You see those mergers a lot, but I can think of very few where it actually works out well, since it always seems that uh, you don't get those two groups of equal size, because there's going to be conflict issues of who's in command, who's second, who gets to uh, retain, retain their ranks and, like, uh, I guess all the specifics of it. It's also about culture, right? Like, one regiment might have a completely different culture, and, like, you're putting all that into one Discord and into uh, one tag. So, like, how, how would you deal with that situation? Uh, I mean, I guess I think it would be... It would pretty much just have to be a long sit down with their regiment leader to organize things, which mainly probably be up like Wayne and Honor. But I couldn't even see uh, a regiment merging with another group if they had completely different uh, ideologue, like different ideas. Like I know Grand Army and 45E, they both merged because they were very similar in rank structure and the idea of what they wanted to do with Holdfast, and that worked out very successfully. But you know, 
it, it would be very rare to see like a, you know, <laughs> a free man sixty three e merge. Right, complete like opposite spectrums. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see here. So like, uh, let's talk about transfers. Um, so say you did have someone that wanted to transfer into the regiment and maybe they had like, you know, a couple hundred hours in the game, like they knew the basics, uh, they might even be really good at the game. So, uh, how would you handle that situation? Cause you want to, you know, get them. So you have a skilled member in the regiment, but you also don't want your members to kind of feel like they're being leapfrogged over by the new guy who hasn't even, you know, never even been here. So how would you handle that situation and kind of balance everything out? Uh, I think Wayne would also be good for this, but we're kind of the home of misfits and broken things. Three out of the four of us in this VC have transferred from another regiment. Uh, I've technically done it twice. Um, it's people don't get like they don't they're not going to start off with a huge rank when they transfer so it isn't that unfair like they're going to come in and me like get lieutenant but they should deserve a rank that's equivalent to what they did uh, and like their experience with the game as for specifics wayne do you want to go into that yeah so for example i was a royal guard and a uh, battery sergeant in the kra when i transferred over i got the rank of kingsman to show my experience with the effort which is the highest enlisted rank but it was fair because for example, I had spent all that time in the carry, and I knew basically everything about lining that I could really gain, everything about being a battery sergeant, artillery, and all that. But I thought I was given a pretty fair rank at the rank of Kingsman. I also knew some of the guys, because I used to go in their VCs and talk to them. So, I think it's a pretty fair system. That way, the current members don't feel like they're getting too leapfrogged. It's also that point where they are given that, like... I guess you could say a fair rank in, for, uh, in return for what they did, and they're not feel like they're basically starting all over again, in a way. So could you understand a regiment that says, like, no, we don't care if you were a colonel in the other regiment. You're going to be starting at the bottom. It's going to be fair play. like, Because I, I believe, like, the 63E has, like, a similar policy to that. So, like... Is it just different policies for different regiments, and this is just like what works for you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's yeah, just general policy wise. Like, I think it, our system is a very fair system, but I can also understand the system like the sixty three where they do that for the fact that it is more fair to their members. I know also ranks are a lot harder to obtain in the sixty three. It's a lot harder because they've been around a lot longer, had a lot more different officers and a lot and more like I guess you could say founded community just because they've had so much time and so many members so i can understand a system like that but our regiment is not new but it's more recent than the 63 have more opportunity and our officer corps is more of a constant switch around based off life experiences and uh basically just general leaving and transferring and all that yeah so let's actually talk about uh regimental longevity if you look at the 51st they've been around I think you, you can uh, target uh, or see remnants of the 51st, like back in 2001, I'm pretty sure. So like over a decade. Um, like, do you look at regiments at, at, like that and, and wonder like, how the hell have you lasted that long? Like maybe, maybe we should be doing something like that. Like, wh what do you think about that? Uh, I mean, we've been a regiment for a year and eight months and We've definitely changed with our ups and downs. I think with what we're doing right now, we're on course to last e uh, a few years, you know, at the very least, hopefully. Uh, a big thing is with what we've seen from, like, regiments such as the 63E, which I think would be a great example, and the 49th would be another good one, is where you see they're a they were able to switch games, because eventually Hold Fast isn't going to last long, especially when I've been told by... Uh, people that the NW mods already a quarter of the way done due to them getting early development access. And I think it's just, if a regiment is able to switch games and move their community and not just hold on to one little piece, then they're not going to die when that game when that game dies. And you also see the 49th version, which is like, uh, instead of 63, which is continuing, it's it was more of a dis 
disbanding and then reforming anew and a new game with the same members in a different structure that's a bit more diverse and different. Yeah, so the 51st did actually uh, switch games a lot. Um, they started out, I think, in Battlegrounds, which is like a Half-Life mod. Um, and then they switched to Mountain Musket, and then they switched to Napoleonic Wars, and now they're in Holdfast. So uh, the, the ability to switch games is important. Um, I guess you guys haven't really had to do that yet. But like, would you guys be prepared to do that? I think we would. Uh, we thought about it for a short bit. Uh, and we formed a small company in War of Rights, which didn't last too long as the game never really got too, really, never really got that much uh, moving in terms of organization and not being so toxic. <laughs> uh, we have done things though, like uh, I'm not sure if it's still going, but I know Honor formed a Armor Three squad, and uh, we've we've gone through like clans and uh, like Conqueror's Blade as well. So I think we'll we're more than capable of being able to switch when the time comes. Yeah. Regarding Bannerlord, uh, we already have a like a few of our guys already playing it, bought the game. Uh, everyone's starting to enjoy it, and eventually when that NW mod does come out, we do have something like that. I think we'll be ready to switch over with the majority of the office core and the most of the enlisted guys. Cool. Uh, so the events that the TRR does uh, attend. Uh, so how do you guys think they're run, like uh, admin wise and rule set wise? Like, do you guys think they're run smoothly, or would you like to see some improvements made? I mean, I think I don't know if Wayne or Spitfire has admin a lot, but I think I'm the only one here that's part of the admin admin squad, admin staff. I like to follow the squad. What we do is we usually try to get numbers, you know, approximately an hour before each event. And then ask for updated numbers around like 10 15 minutes before the event actually starts. But I, th I like to think that we run things smoothly, like we generally start on time. Not to say that you know we still have a few hiccups now, every now and then. You know, some regiment might give us like 20 extra, like their numbers would be 20 times or 20 more people. That's what I meant. Than their actual numbers, so we would have to adjust. But I don't know. We host two events a week, and from what I hear from other regiments, it's smooth. They like it. You know, there's not a lot of toxicity within the chat, and not a lot of regiments like I don't want to call a bitchin, but complain about rule breaks because our admins usually do a good job. We also have around like two to three admins per server, so I think I like to say we're doing a good job. Regarding yeah, that and uh, to other regiments, when we attend other regiments events, they're usually uh, decent on it as well. But uh, all the events that we've had real issues with, we've just tended to leave that event, drop it in, and find another one. Just because, we'll of course try to put our input in and get things changed if we can, and try to help out the other regiment if they are having those issues. But if we're having major issues, we just tend to drop the event and uh, go to another event. And most uh, events we attend uh, right now, if not all of the events attend right now, I think we have a pretty fair rule set. And uh, pretty fair admin crews from those regiments adminning the event, and we tend to enjoy them a lot. I I agree. I started admin when I took Honor's place during the original TRR, TRB Saturday, back in 2018 with McCormack. And, you know, that event was created because the two events going on during that period had rule sets that were very swayed to one side and there wasn't really a middle ground and you know that's why the first week we launched it uh we hit 200 uh and we had to run a second service second week and uh we've always really done that we've put we try and offer input and we offer help like with admins or rules or balancing but uh if the event really isn't going that well uh we either move or we look to create our own with uh if we have interest i think we run Total, I think we've run the Saturday NA, Saturday EU, Friday NA, Friday EU, Wednesday NA, Tuesday NA. Uh, yeah, and we run those uh, different times, and you know we've we've given up the times uh, to other regiments, and like other regiments have come in with their own events that have killed ours off. 
and it's a uh, as long as the event is running smoothly, it doesn't really matter if it's hosted by us or someone else. Cool. Um, so let's talk about loyalty. Um, do you guys expect loyalty from your members? Like, uh, say a member just like left one day and didn't even say anything. Like, who would they be dead to you? Like, what? What are you sort of expecting from your your members? Um, regarding that, if someone just randomly leaves, of course that's their own choice, and usually it's for one reason or the other. That's fine. We try to keep a general like. I guess you could say kind persona towards them. We don't really show toxicity. The only real toxicity we show I've ever seen is when members just leave in a very bad way. Like, they complain a lot in the sense that, like, they just scream, shout, they're toxic people, and they just cause issues for us. Those are the only real people that we kind of are dead to. Um, generally, if it's, like, where they have to go for one reason or the other, it's generally fine. We'll talk to them still. Got a few people randomly leave and come back, and we're fine with that. It's just what tends to happen with the game in real life. Not much we can do about it, and no real reason to show hate towards that. Cool. So, uh, say like a member was like planning on leaving. They might be a bit like, um, they might have issues with the regiment, but they might feel a little bit intimidated. Like, oh, I don't want to talk to Wayne. Like, he's uh, he's like, you know, he's higher up in the rankings. Rankings. Um, is there a system you guys have to like, uh, so members that have grievances, like they can make that known without feeling intimidated? Um, we have a system of hierarchy, this, uh, how we go. So basically if it's a smaller issue, just complaining about another enlisted member, you go up to your section leader, who's usually the sergeant. Um, and then you'll talk to him about it and he'll try to solve the issue. If it's a bigger issue, that's going to constant problem he'll that section leader will go up to the sergeant major which is crescent they'll talk to crescent crescent will try to fi fix the issue but if it's like a major major issue with someone up in the high command or something like that um, you can go up to the major of your company is the best one to go up to if it's uh, about officers or ncos if it's about the major himself though you can go up to uh the lieutenant colonels and the colonels but if it is a bigger issue with lieutenant colonels and the colonels themselves, you can talk to the lower enlisted. I'm not lower enlisted, but lower NCO core and like mid NCO core and even higher NCO core and uh, off commission officer core, because we all generally work together and we don't want anyone to have a problem or an issue. And everyone in here is so chill about it that we can usually resolve the issue. And they'll be kept anonymous. We'll just tell the complaint unless they want to be known. I think that's something we've perfected through failure. So some people, they just, uh, if they, they had problems with high command and they, instead of going to the high command and explaining why, they would they would rather just keep it to themselves until eventually it just continues to boil up over months of periods and then they just let it all out. But now, as Wayne explained, through the hierarchy, everyone has some, someone to go to for each issue separately if they wish. Cool. Um, so have you guys like been successful like resolving issues then before they can get like explode into like one big thing? I think we've been pretty successful with all our issues. Like everyone that has a complaint or another issue has always uh, been able to express it. The only people that really have, we've had a real issue with were just general toxic people and we can't really improve that. That's the person's persona. And how they act we can't change their attitude completely we'll try to help them along and generally we even are i try to keep them in the regiment for as long as we can just so we can try to change their attitude see if we can improve them because of course everyone has their bad day everyone has a bad week and we try to make sure we're not making too rash decisions with people and instantly just kicking them out over small things and uh maybe just a bad week but if it's just cost toxicity it's just the general persona of the person and they want to keep being that way and we tried for multiple weeks to fix it, multiple days try to fix it, then we'll just, we'll tell them about what's going to happen, we're going to give them a final warning. If they keep it up, then we're going to have to kick them from the regiment. Pretty sure, as long as you're not blacklisted, you can eventually rejoin. But if they are blacklisted, if they keep it up and they're just general toxic, even when they've been kicked out, then we just blacklist them from the regimental discord and other sh uh, stuff like that. You have to do something extremely bad to get on the blacklist. 
Uh, can you guys speak a bit on uh, promotions and how they work? So it depends on the company. General promotions, how it works is uh, the NCOs and the COs have a vote. Uh, we have this big ranking sheet that all the NCOs fill in by the and, and officers and all the high command fill in by the end of the week. And we both, we write down the name of the person that's going to get promoted, their new rank, uh, any comments on them. And then uh, anyone can suggest this, by the way. Anyone has the ability to write in the little suggestion box who uh, they think should be promoted. And then everyone has a little drop down where they can say yes, no, or uh, not applicable because they don't, they're like a neutral stance or they don't, can't really comment on it. Um, and then basically how it works is that's usually followed if everyone usually, the majority tends to agree with the promotion, it goes ahead. The only change, I guess you could say, is the major has the executive order to cancel the promotion, even if everyone else agrees on it, if they think it's a big issue. But the major tends never to do that just because if everyone else usually agrees with the issue, then, like with the promotion, not the issue, sorry, then it goes ahead. But uh, besides that, we just have that general system for promotion. CO promotions are a bit different just because once it's up to the CO and NCO level, it tends to be, for NCO, it tends to just be the officer core of that company and the high command voting on it and like talking about it. But uh, if it's a CO position, it's totally dependent on the major of the company and the high command themselves. Cool. So let's talk about uh, the flip side of that. Let's talk about demotions. Um, so when it does come time to reprimand someone, uh, what options are on the table, um, if any? For demotion? We haven't had a demotion in a very long time. Like, for the past, I don't know, six, seven months, something like that. It's very hard. Like, we don't tend to demote people. We'll reprimand them, of course. We'll talk to them about the issues that we see, and we'll try to drag them into separate calls, channels, explain what they've done wrong. What we tend to do more often is we just tend to delay the promotion. So we'll extend the uh, time that it takes them to get promoted. Ranks are pr uh, pretty fluent in the TRR. So about every two or three weeks for the lower guys, they get promoted. Our guys, every like month or two, they tend to get promoted. The general uh, promotion time uh, period, you could say. Up, of course, until like the CO ranks, which is just based off vacancy then and all that. But it's very hard to get demoted. Uh, if you are demoted, you've done something seriously wrong. And people that tend to get demoted tend to get usually kicked out of the regiment just because to get demoted, you have to done something really wrong. And if you tend to do that, you keep up with it. You can, don't really change it you can uh, get kicked out of the regiment. So has that been sort of like a pattern then? Like if you notice someone who is toxic and who is like doing all that stuff that would cause you to get demoted, like you don't really see any sort of like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like any changes in them? Any rehab, there we go, rehabilitation uh, in them? It tends not to be sadly that way. They tend not to rehabil uh, rehabilitate. Because we, it's very hard to personally make me angry and any of our real NCOs or CO Corps angry. We're very patient people. Um, if you tend to get demoted, it's, again, sort of for very, like, reasons, and you tend just to get kicked out for toxicity and all that. It's very hard to, since we don't really have that general, like, really strict hard punishments, it's not really, a, say, easy to demote people in the TRR especially since most people have a say on that demotion uh, if they're an NCO or CO so it's really hard like to rehabilitate people cool uh, can you guys share any time you've had to make a tough decision I mean the main tough decision we're having right now I guess you could say is for the new infantry captain which is between me and the other lieutenant just because we both do our job I think and I've heard pretty well um, it's very hard for the major to decide between us two. So we've had, actually, we did our own poll in the company for all the company members and the high, high command to uh, do a little vote. That's all anonymous. And it ended up not helping the major at all because it ended up being a 17-17 vote. So, um, I don't know. There's no real hardships that way, uh, that, way that we've really faced. Uh, when Anna was gone... It was myself uh, and two 
three others in the range command, one of which went MIA for a while until we had to have Honor remove his tags when he found a short bit to get onto his phone. But during that time, we, it was pretty much we had things to talk about, like we had a problem with a member of range command and we need to figure out how we could deal with it without someone to have the poems to and no one really above to act as the one I see, as well as uh, problems of replacing that said person and replacing the uh, member that went MIA. And it was just uh, decisions, I guess, on, on uh, what how, how to exactly get deposed to someone that's the same rank as us. And uh, I think that was just difficult decisions that we had to make over uh, a short process. Uh, Light, have you ever had to make a tough decision? Besides where to go during line leading, not really. How about you, Crescent? I mean, I guess the toughest decision I had to make was, you know, just transferring to TRR. But other than that, uh, actually, yeah, I did have one issue. Well, like, not an issue, but like, a tough decision when one of my buds from my former regiment decided to come join the TRR. You know, I didn't like he was a very good leader, he's a very good guy. He's a, like I could depend on him whenever I want. But like when it came to us, when it came to like us voting on his promotion, I don't know how to vote because I feel like he was still too fresh for him to go up through the ranks. But then I also knew that he had merit, like he didn't go to his rank in my former regiment for nothing. So I ended up just like upstraining from the vote, but yeah, we, we voted to promote him at, at the end, but that was probably my tough decision so far. Cool. So you've all been through the meat grinder that is running a regiment. Um... What advice would you give to someone that may want to start their own regiment or group? Start it with friends and don't do it on your own because it's going to be, if, if you're up for it, then go for it, shoot, you know, shoot for the stars. But forming it with friends that, you know, you can depend on to lead when you're not there definitely has its benefits. And I think uh, a lot of success, successful regiments have done that. Um, start it off small. And don't instantly make yourself something like a Jenna or something. For example, Honor started off as a captain. Maybe you start off as like a lieutenant or something. Start small. Start with a small group of friends that, I guess you could say, like that play together. You constantly see each other. You just want something fun to do. Um, and then build up from there. Besides that, just make sure you're not promoting people too quickly. Make sure you're keeping it general fair. Like how uh, promotions are done. Like make sure it's fair. Make sure it's equal. And uh. Just generally, try to keep a positive attitude the entire time, because the more negative you are, the more, uh, I guess you could say, blunt you are, the more issues you tend to have, and the less fun you tend to have. Then you tend to quit the game and not have really any fun with it. Uh, Light, do you have any advice? Um, I don't have any experience with necessarily starting a regiment for Holdfast, but I know I've led... A couple of clans or guilds and other games that I've played and uh, like the gentleman before me have said it's always great to do with friends do with people you trust and to make sure that the people you put in those positions of power can be trusted Chris I mean I'm, in, I'm kind of in the same boat as like I haven't had many experiences in online communities but in real life I do hold a position of power I'm, I'm, direct, I'm on the board of directors for a big lobbyist organization. And how we started off was, we started, you know, like Spitfire and Rain mentioned, start off with people you trust, people you know, people you can depend on, because, you know, those are the key things. And then, yeah, gradually grow. You're bound to have, like, you're bound to have bad things go. Like, not everything is going to go your way. And the important thing is, every time you fall down, you brush yourself up and you get back up, right? Always have determin determination, perseverance. And yeah, I guess that's essentially the key. 
Cool. So um, speaking of people starting regiments, uh, this is a pretty niche game, right? And it doesn't have an unlimited population of people just like storming in playing the game, right? So how do you feel about there being maybe too many regiments and maybe too many people starting starting regiments? Um, is it could it be like a bad thing that maybe someone starts a regiment gets like 10 recruits the regiment disbands and those 10 people never play the game again like do you see how that could maybe become a problem yeah i mean that's definitely has been the case and will continue to be the case you know nine you know only one in ten guys that you get are going to actually stick around and that's similar to regiments if you go back to when you started especially you are in 2017 <laughs> Ten percent of the regiments that were there are still here, and ninety-nine percent of those guys are gone, and won't be returning back to hold fast. So, I do like the idea of a lot of regiments. So you have like so, so you have different options on like what faction, your legion, and like I guess uh, what you want to do with that regiment. Like, would you rather go more like casual and pubs or private events and tournaments? But if it gets to a point where you have so many regiments at the trying to fight over those last few recruits and then they all slowly start to die that's when you see it it turns into a problem and merging to, to stay alive is uh, becomes a more plausible option oh when did you have anything that uh, no cool i guess we'll move on um so let's talk about the developers um, how do you think they've done so far, and what are you hoping they work on next? They've definitely improved a lot since I've started playing. Uh, my favorite thing will always have to be the pressure release and the first melee update when I got the Kumite started. Mm, yes. But, uh, I think that they've definitely done, uh, spent their time on questionable things uh, that they've added, like, implemented into the game. Uh, I think it's been at times a waste, I guess, a waste of time that they could have pushed towards something else. You know, I would have I would have rather them see, seen them fix the game rather than add more content that's just going to be thrown into the waste. But they're also a very small team. You know, in, in D devs released, they released an unfinished game and and they're doing the best that they can with a, a small team and li limited budgeting. And I think that they've definitely gotten better uh, in the later time of Holdfast uh, with keeping up with the content uh, and keeping the public informed. Oh, Wayne, what do you think? I think the developers have done okay so far. I bought the game basically as soon as it released. Um, I wish they didn't waste so much time on, again, what Sparefro was saying, useless content and more pushed it towards fixing the game and expanding on more, like, community-driven and wanted content. Um, I think it took a very long time for the cab update to happen, and that was a pretty essential part of the game. But I think they've recently done very well with how they pushed content and they've been pumping it out. And I, I don't really have any complaints right now on how they're doing. Light? Uh, I'm relatively new to the game, so uh, less less familiar what old Holdfast was like, but definitely uh, I was excited when AGS released the Russia update. Uh, Napoleonic Russia is one of my favorite historical factions. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of great history there. Um, but yeah, I think AGS has done well so far um, from my small frame of reference. Like... I'm not a big tech guy. I don't play a lot of games. I'm not a gamer like most of you guys. But I guess the like I don't have any issues with the develop developers, the AGS. But what I have issues is with how the game sometimes is administered, like with the admin stuff. Like for instance, there was a couple times where you know people were well, not abiding by the rules of games and being like racist cunts. And you know I had proof and I. And there was an admin on at the same time too. And I told them, and yo, you're seeing this, right? And this guy's like, oh, just ignore it, just ignore it. And I'm like, why should I ignore racism, right? 
And then another, like, another issue I had is when I was with my former regiment, I was recruiting. And, you know, sometimes I used to post a message, like, I don't know, five, ten seconds early for that every five minute recruitment timer. And, you know, the admins would be on my ass PM and be like, you can't do that, you can't do that. And then I'll try to explain, like, oh, dude, it's only 10 seconds. My bad, I didn't even notice. And then admins would be like, all bitchy with me, like, oh, yeah, I don't give a fuck. You can't do that. You shouldn't be doing that. So I guess AGS kind of needs to administer the game a bit more or find people who are competent enough to administer the game. But other than that, I don't have any issues with AGS. Pretty great developers, I think. Yeah, I think the admin team... uh... There's definitely the standouts. Like, I think pe- people once uh, ran home and got onto his PC to sort out a server incident. When there was, when I I went into the uh, Discord and I counted, uh, I think it was eleven other server admins were online at the time. Three of them in Holdfast, and I DM them and got no response. So it's a bit of an annoyance that AGS hasn't stepped forth more with their admin team. I know that they're not. I know that they're not the head of that, and that that goes under uh, Getty, but maybe a bit more involvement with them would uh, be nice. Cool. So, is there like any um, regiments, other other regiments that you guys want to give a shout out to? TRB definitely. <laughs> they uh, they helped form the regiment. Uh, McCorm- Big M, as I call him, was always there at the start. To get us into events, get us servers, and just yell at Arno when he was screwing up. 77th uh, as well. I mean, right now, I would say the 4070, just because we work well with each other. They tend to help us out, and uh, I think we generally have good communication with them. We can always uh, rely on them. We need their help. Yo, shout out to my boys, my Scandinavian boys at the GMB. Fucking love them, bro. They're so jokes, and I love working with them. <laughs> I'll give a shout out to uh, the boys in the twenty sixth. I have a lot of good friends over there. Cool. So, like, what about uh, regiments that you guys may not have such a good relationship with? Like, uh, what are some regiments you're hoping like relations improve over time? Um. Probably definitely either the 37th and the White Coats. I think we've improved a lot with the 37th. Have more of a stable uh, relationship with the White Coats right now. We also are kind of rocky right now with the 77th. Uh, so we're hopefully going to improve that, get that back up. I think that, that just comes from uh, the the step in the 77th hierarchy as an NCO is to transfer to the TRR. Oops. <laughs> uh I think TRB maybe they took in they've taken in uh, a rough estimate probably thirty to forty X TRR that have been banned from our server, if I had to guess. So, and a lot of them remain active and that I haven't talked with in a long time. So maybe uh, <laughs> work our relations back with not the whole regiment but certain members of their community. Yo, I forgot to give a shout out to the 63. Oh my god, bro. I love how they melee. And I love how their admins are so strict. Like, if all the admins were like that, ha. Zen and Misha, ha. I love you guys. (laughs) They love Ostro too. (laughs) Wait, so did you you just say that 40 peep XTRR were banned from the TRR Discord server? Oh, 40, I, I would say more. Probably oh, probably 30, I, regarding, I would argue. Regarding that issue, what happened was, remember, so like going back to while we were talking about that coup and that group that left, so that regiment disbanded, and then most of them joined the DRB. Which is yeah, why there's so many. That made up two-third, two-thirds of that, and most of the others went in uh, groups, uh, and... A large amount of them have also since been removed from their regiment as well. Wait, so I'm a bit confused because usually when you want to ban people, it's, you know, like the ringleaders, you know, the people that are sort of the bad actors, right? So 
what would cause you to ban 30 people? Um, if they, as Spitfire if... was saying with a kind of Brexit idea, there was about half the regiment left when that happened. So you lost about 20 of the infant, uh, like 20 of the staff. So basically, all our that's hence why they say Brexit is because almost all the EU staff left. Like, just to put it into perspective, we had a company of, I believe they said 20 ox, and it went down to a company of seven ox by the end of it. Yeah, it was, so, it was over a period of about a week, and it was two separate events, and I think the opinions still differ on what exactly happened. I think there's only three people that were there during the meetings of both times, two of them here. Uh, it was just pretty much complaints because currently at the time ranger command was all na reason being was there was no eu guy that had the rank to be promoted because the two that did uh it pretty much there, there was an event with the kra some eu people said some things that shouldn't have been said and we were threatened to be kicked out of four different events so we had to act on it and when we did the eu staff there complained and it formed into uh, a, f a first attempted coup. I still have my screenshot folder, which uh, was put down, and the ringleaders were banned. Uh, but the second one formed a month later with, uh, ironically, the EU staff that helped put down the first, saying that they acted, uh, that they wanted to reverse the decision, and we said no, no, pretty much. And uh, pretty much uh, at a Sunday promotion ceremonies, most of the EU staff said they were leaving, and a lot of them, uh, a number of them, also ended up knowing that they were going to be removed from the server, ended up being racist and spamming the chats, which just forced the bans to go out extremely fast until all of them were removed. And then, final, and then I think the next day, uh, I think Ardu was the only company that didn't lose anyone, and they were caught uh, being used to reg snipe. Uh, people to uh, to trash us, and even take screenshots of private in, uh, information and in private chats that shouldn't have been released, and so that pretty much ended with such a large amount of people being removed entirely. Wow. <laughs> okay then. I guess we'll move on. We're near the end. Um. Let's see here. So, what can we expect from you guys, like in the near future? Are you hoping that things sort of remain stable and the way they are now, or are you looking to shake some things up? I suppose just continue to grow, uh, uh, get better. I know we we're not going to be involved in season two of NWL, and I know uh, the TRB and ninety third guys have some EU. Uh, leagues starting up which uh i'm not i'm guessing we'll be interested in i think that's a near future goal of ours oh wayne where are you hoping that trr goes next um i think we're pretty successful right now so just hopefully just to continue how we're going right now uh maybe even expand and eventually of course if Bandalord does become the new thing the new trend, you could say, uh, just transfer over there, continue the great shit, and eventually some of us may step down and just be able to still be active in the community, keep the TR growing, but just taking more of a laid back role. Uh, light. Definitely looking forward to uh, developing infantry and getting getting some great new things out of infantry, working on some new tactics, uh, and things like that. And I just want to say that the TRR are going to surprise a lot of people with how good we've gotten, so... Look how we're coming. Cool, so can you guys share any moments that have stood out to you over the past few weeks or months? Um, moments have stood out to me just the, I guess my favorite thing that's happened really is the communication with the 4070 that we started. I think it's really cool and we've uh, established a good relationship with them and communication wise and we've basically gotten pretty friendly with them or at least I have and the infantry corps has. 
Um, besides that, I think we're just generally doing pretty well right now. It's been fun. Uh, coming, coming back and like seeing the regiment hit its new attendance peaks at a consistently bringing you know forty guys and hitting in the sixties was a uh, pretty nice, pretty nice to see all all the companies uh being able to fill out fill out their specials, which is hard when you're running you know five different units. A uh, light. Do you want to share any moments? Um, hmm, my favorite moment so far. It's tough because there's been a lot of just fun moments where I've almost fallen out of my chair laughing in the TR. Um, I have to say it's the moments when we're in a line battle, we're getting towards the end, and we're winning, and Wayne and I decide to do goof off a little bit and <laughs> migrate to the back of the line and just goof off a little bit just to relieve some stress after nearly winning the line battle. I'm going to say, oh, oh, go you go. Wow, okay, baby. I was going to say, the highlight of my stay so far is having a medal named after me. It was, that was the fuck greatest feeling. So, shout out to Honor for naming the medal after me. Crescent's comeback. Uh, we, we were losing 4-1 to one versus the 77th. And uh, Crescent took over the lead and brought us to 7-6 victory. I sadly wasn't given the medal because I was refing <laughs> and not in the regiment at the time. Well, technically I brought it back to 6-5 and then I let Honor finish it off. Honor say could it finish in. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's toxic. Only a little. Toxic. Cool, so we'll start with Spitfire. Um, anyone you want to give a shout out to? My mom, my dad, uh, for putting me on this wonderful earth, you know. Uh, maybe, mm, let's go with J-Bob and Tuba Hyde for getting me to the game. Uh, and then I suppose Honor and Guinea Pig for getting me into the regiment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Wayne, any shout outs? Um, just to honor for allowing the great opportunity for uh, Duke, who's our infantry major, for all the op opportunities he's given me to become an infantry lieutenant. And just to all the general members of the TR for how great they are, especially the infantry company. Light, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, just a shout out to Wayne for basically teaching me how to line lead along with all the other members of the line leadership program that have taught me uh Ferq, duke gubsy all you guys have been great um shout out to george in the 26th and a perfect name from the 26th uh look forward to memeing with you guys some more uh yeah that's pretty much it shout out to fucking Wayne for shooting me across the map when i was with the 77 that definitely changed my fate in whole fast and shout out to scar for you know being a great friend Scar Talon. Follow him on Twitch. I want to give a shout out to Hay Bills for telling me to sabotage the TRR when Honor founded it. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> when I first heard that, I was so pissed, I went back and got all my dirty Hay Bill picks and, and saved them all. Oh boy, the amount of, the amount of Hay Bill oh, uh, fucking blackmail this regiment has. Yikes. <laughs> I, 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 I take a lot of screenshots, and a lot of them I shouldn't take. But I just keep enough so I can blackmail people when I need to. I, I mean, I have a hey Bills works. folder as well. Fine. Oh, Astro, Astro, I have one more shout out. Astro. And I think Astro. Not that again. There's Astro. Sorry, <laughs> I mispronounced. I'm kind of tired. Um, I do want to shout out to Captain Emperor and the KRA. Uh, your loud singing will always encourage me to try and shoot you in the line battle. Thank you. Awesome. So we are at the end. Uh, do you guys have any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you want to leave the listeners with? We'll start with Spitfire. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Uh, Supermax contracts are on the table. One penny in a recruit rank for, from the transfers office. Uh, yeah. 
Wayne? Hashtag Demote Crescent. Light? Hashtag Demote Wayne and Crescent. Crescent? And Tall Draft. Watch the 2022 elections in Toronto. I was surprised. Who cares about Canada? Fucking Canadian. Wow, okay. <laughs> you don't want to see me elected? I see how it is. <laughs> awesome. So this has been the TRR interview. Or I guess it's been most more of a podcast, I guess. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Spitfire. Wayne. Light. And Crescent, I'm sure Honor will enjoy this interview when he watches it. Goodbye, everyone.